everybody, it's Cinnamon Cooney, your art sharp, and today I'm gonna show you how to paint this gorgeous acrylic painting. This is a painting of a supernatural, glowing, luminous, colorful sunset with distant hills. It's actually super beginner friendly, and I'm gonna break down every part of how you would create this for your paint this painting for yourself at home. On the mic is my husband John. Hello. So if I'm demonstrating a technique or showing a tool or doing anything in this painting, John makes sure that the camera is pointed exactly what I'm talking about because what you can see you can generally do in the description below I uh, if you open that up extra there's a link to the website and you can also find materials and other extra information down there I do provide traceables and lots of extra stuff for these lessons that are amazing um, you know, you just never know what we've got going on too. So it's like really fun to go out and check out the website, but you got to find that in the description below. If for some reason on your mobile device, it doesn't open, what you can do is you can just go to thearcherpa.com and that information is also there. And then I also tend to put it on Facebook. I kind of just put it everywhere. And then whatever you guys can find, hopefully then you see it. And I just don't want you ever missing anything. Now this is easier than you think. It looks like a pretty like, whoa, sunset, but actually there's a couple techniques and tricks and tips that I have for you in painting this to make it a lot more beginner friendly and a lot easier. If you're here for the premiere, put your questions all in caps so that we can answer during the show. And other than that, guys, it's just time to get your paint and your brushes. Come back and I'm going to show you how to paint this at home. Today's surface is an 11 by 14 canvas, horizontal on the landscape. I have the wisher intention. This is general, uh, just that there is this peace and calm out there in the world that people just feel more peaceful and more calm and make decisions from calm places. Uh, we have the paint quinacridone magenta, cad red medium, cad yellow medium, Mars black, phthalo blue, ultramarine blue, deoxazine purple, and titanium white. Shall we throw up step one, John? All right, now I am going to do a little bit of palette mixing. Um, sometimes I put the paint out, you know, directly on there, but today I want a very, very light blue. So I'm gonna start with a little of my ultramarine blue and my titanium white together. And I'm gonna just paint the whole canvas this very, very, very light blue. Whole thing. Oh. Ultramarine blue and titanium white. I'm using a number 30 Simply Simmons brush. A nice blue. Mm, cool. Just, I love that first layer because, like, no matter where the painting's going to go, this layer, very chill. <laughs> you, you could say this is a cool blue. This is a cool, well, yeah, it's a red bias blue, so I don't know if you'd say that is cool because, oh. you know. Well, see, it's, 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 it's a metaphorically cool. It's like, you know, it's like Fonzie cool. Maybe I just, too, on the blues, old. to stay out of the bias of the blue, I just go red bias, uh, 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 green bias on my two blues that way. I'm not, you know, in the middle of that internet controversy of which blue is warm and which blue is cool. <laughs> I'm going around the edges here. Anyone can paint around the edges if you, you know, you want to. You're like, I don't want to have to deal with framing or any of that. You can paint around the edges. You don't have to, it's just a thing that you can do. And I like to start a lot of times on one of these acrylic solid ranges because um, it gets rid of the white of the canvas. If I don't need the white of the canvas for a technique, it's nice to um, get the whole thing sealed with acrylic paint. Gesso is lovely, but it's very, very thirsty has a nice tooth to it and it is a canvas surface prep but sometimes it just really soaks up the paint soaks it into the surface and when you're doing like a lot of blending or glazing or dry brushing sometimes having that surface with a little bit of paint on it just makes life so much easier doesn't even take that much this is true if you're painting on paper too now be sure and Take your brush, rinse it out, and put it to the side because you're gonna wanna wash all your brushes after. Now to do anything else, I'm gonna need to put out more white and dry the canvas. If you're here uh, re-watching or during the premiere, remember this is the part where you pause the video if you're trying to paint along with me and we both dry our surfaces and then you push play when you're done and then I'll be painting with you on your time, which is what you should have me be do is me paint on your time. Okay, John, when we come back, we'll have a dry surface. 
In this step, I want you to mentally divide the canvas in half and in half again. And here in the center, down in the lower third of the canvas, that's where our light source is mostly going to be. So coming up here is going to be the transition from the sunlight to the cooler areas of the sky. I have a one inch oval mop Princeton from the select line of brushes. I'm gonna go ahead and get it lightly wet wipe it off on paper towel and start with just a little white paint. It's okay that the blue is showing through. I actually do want that. That's gonna help me with my transition later. And as I'm gonna go up, you know, I'm gonna be able to make a nice little ombre through the blues. A little more white here. You can see I'm just lightly putting it on. It's okay that it's a bit transparent. I want it to stay wet. And I'm gonna take a little bit of my ultramarine blue and my phthalo blue mixed together. This is like my favorite. And I'm going to just very softly, while these two layers of paint are wet, blend them together. You can see that just makes a nice soft transition. And then I can come up with my blue and ultramarine up here. And have a much darker, bluer sky. So that's how I'd get my transition from those, from that sunlight into the blue. A lot of times it's really hard for people to go from the yellow to the blue. And when you see a sunset like this where there's a lot of purple and red clouds, it can be kind of hard to know at what point you would paint those. So, you know, knowing, oh, hey, here at this stage, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get some just white here. Rinse out my brush a little bit and blend that out. Um, at this stage, you're just making that transition. All you're doing is you're transitioning the sky making a nice little ombre space that's going to be peeking out. Now I'm gonna keep going before this is completely dry. So let's call this a step, but I'm gonna keep painting. I'm gonna rinse out my brush and wipe it off on paper towel so it's not super wet. I'm gonna get a smidge of my yellow into my white with my brush. I'm gonna come here and kind of dust that yellow in. And so I was trying to do that while it still had some moisture in it. And I can still blend kind of coming up through there. So this is working for me because everything is still kind of damp. With acrylic paint, it can be hard to blend, but what it really is is that your paint is drying on you. And I'm gonna let it go through here. Now there's a light green kind of that transition that will happen. That also happens in the sky. A lot of times we just don't notice it, but it does happen in that space when it's going from the kind of gold of the sunset to the blue. So it's okay if you're seeing a light one here what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just very, very lightly brush. And a thing that I can do to even improve that a bit is if I come over with a soft dry brush and I can blend everything in together even better and softer. Just a starting place. You know, it gives me that place to begin my uh, layering and getting everything going. Now to do anything else really from here, I am gonna want it to be dry. So we're gonna dry everything. You're gonna pause me again. Pause me again. And when we come back, I'll show you what you're gonna do next. So now I'm gonna start kind of putting some more serious detail. You'll notice that this stage is still pretty messy. I like to consider this like an architecture for everything that's coming. I get this underlayment on and then everything can come out of that. I'm gonna take my yellow and a smidge 
just a smidge of red on a number, this is the number 18 Raphael Artini brush. Make sure that there's enough moisture in there for this to, and I'm gonna mentally kind of think of my son again. And now we're gonna start kind of a scumbling motion. Get a little bit of kind of white going around here. If I need to get more water on my brush, I will. I'm trying not to over wet it. And if, if it gets over wet, then I have to uh, get my hand towel involved where I squeeze out the extra moisture. Kind of just softening that there. Again, this is almost center, right? So our focus is off over here, but our light is right here. I'm just making sure we've got a nice little white and then I'm gonna come around and as you can see, think about that glow just with the cad red. And there's sort of like a soft hatching kind of motion. So now we have that soft focus sun. When you have that in, let's go on to the next step because we're gonna have to get super busy now. Begin, begin to come up into this sort of distant sky, the cool kind of distant sky. I'll go ahead and get my white into my blue that I already had here and it's okay that it might pick up a little yellow in it as we talked about before. We don't mind that. I'm being very irregular with this. I know I've got a lot of clouds that are going to come lay or over this. There's really this part here that I have to sort of think about very, very carefully and the rest of it, it's layering anyway. So I don't have to be that worn out or concerned about it. My ultramarine blue and my phthalo blue together. Sometimes I'll have to get the brush wet again and then kind of come in and, you know, load up. As I go up, I will want the blue to become uh, a kind of bluer blue. A the bluer. top of the atmosphere. I like that, a bluer blue. That bluer blue, and I'm scumbling. You know, that's sort of a scratchy, rough brush stroke and I'm blending in the edges. and blending over here. As I come to the outer edge, maybe like a little more blue and a little more into the ultramarine. You can see this is a little darker right there, isn't it? In this corner. These kind of skies are a lot of fun to do. They're often easier than maybe we even think. Kind of blending that here. Do I have a lot of orange and purple clouds coming? Yes, but that I can still set myself up, you know, for a good result by making sure that the underpinnings of the painting, as they would say, it's a very kind of old timey concept there. Sure. I'm gonna kind of hit this side as well, but you can see that it's now that kind of, that sort of blue gold event is sort of happening over here. You know, I might even in this particular case get a little of my purple in here. The reason I wiped my brush out on my towel is that I saw foaming, which it's just too much water in the paint um, with such scratchy, scratchy bristles.
the dry brush where you go over it with a soft dry brush that will fix that if you're having any trouble with that you can blend it out that way I'm gonna get a little bit of my white onto here and there's so much cloud work here you don't have to be that intense with yourself about it So like if I had foaming that I wanted to smooth out, I would just take a dry soft brush. And as you can see that just just smooths right on out. Smooths it right on out and it'll it'll go right right away. It kind of only works if the brush is soft and dry, but it does give you a way to get rid of that. So I've got a nice kind of interesting multitonal sky here, which is a good place to start good good place to start I'm gonna dry everything again and I'll show you what we do next when we come back remember to pause me and then we'll meet back at this canvas in just a second so now we're gonna do some of my favorite clouds which are sort of distant wispy clouds in the far far background I'm gonna continue using my number 18 round I'm gonna get a little of my purple and my ultramarine blue over here to kind of together and a bunch of white it just makes kind of this little soft purpley cloud that I can begin to wiggle my brush here. And I'm plying in. And so a lot of this is about touching from here to here on the brush. Can go a little bit darker in the purple as I come up. These are far away and you should see, you know, some of the blue and everything kind of peeking out. Sometimes I'll come on the toe and make little little whiffets. These are these are little just delicate little bits, aren't they? come closer to my light source they might get lighter just pulling those in maybe a little more purple and blue for these over here don't have a lot of water on the brush and my paint coating is fairly light I'm not loading the brush heavily This is just what's peeking out. Just peek it. Yeah, this little this little bunch of stuff is just what's going to keep that sky uh, dimensional and interesting. You know, perhaps a little heavier over here. but I still work it around where there's little spots of the blue showing through. Dancing the brush around. And it really is like dancing it. You're just, you're just, these are, these are little elements of color that will peer through other clouds. It's about the layering. Clouds are about the layers. Ogres and they clouds. They really are about the layers. Ogres, onions, and clouds have layers. Sometimes I'll come in and just make them have some more interesting kind of elements.
maybe a little more blue into that and some white. Okay, let's call that a layer. I'm gonna rinse out my brush and continue on. Gonna do something completely different now, so get ready, it's gonna get weird. Okay, so I'm gonna take a little bit of my cad red and cad yellow. I'm gonna make a bit of a yellow orange. Kind of just go back and forth, forth, fairly low, actually. You know, here it's maybe a little more orange. Kind of thinking about being around that sun some. Come in with a little more red to that outside area. This just is going to be peeking through some other layers of clouds, but if it's not there, it can't peek. That makes sense. You have to paint the back, the furthest one away first. Yeah, you're just constantly layering. All right, so as I get closer to the sun, the clouds will become more yellow in their orange. As I get further away, they will become more red. And that is the dance. I'm just making a little bank, little bank. If ever it gets away from me, I can just come back through and then add more yellow so it's okay. So I don't really stress about that part. This is almost part of the halo. Can even kind of come and blend that together. See how I'm getting the white in there to make a transition? Yeah. Just a fun little sunset. I really like this sunset. It's a really nice color set. It does. It has just a lot of personality and layers and some of our very favorite colors. As I come further out, then it's quinacridone and cad red. You can see I will blend, you know, as over the wet paint as I'm coming out. Do something kind of wild here where I take this into that kind of purple that I had. And with some white and blend that. I know. It's 
really great colors. They're just fun. This is a dance. Enjoy your dance dance. A little more white on that. Oh, so you can see me just playing with the with the cloud. We're just playing. This is a playful sky. Your general feeling should be playful with it. See how it gets darker as we go out and we get more fantastical. That's just the, the darker is more as it, it, it shifts away from the, the yellow. Because we're the shifting center, yeah. away from the light. A little more purple into that mix, a little more white. And then I'll come forward with just a little more white into here on the toe. Notice that I'm making very irregular edges. It's really what a lot of this is about is finding those irregular edges. I'll come in and sort of blend all this with that orange. See how I'm doing? Yeah, it looks cool. It's just a bank. It is a good idea to rinse out. And because we just did a lot there, we'll call this a step, but we'll keep going. And I'll get my towel. <laughs> all right. We're going to continue to uh, plot and plan some clouds, a here, a there, a everywhere. A little yellow and red. Making myself some nice orange. Again, if I notice I have too much water in my brush, I hit it with a towel and take it right back out. Now I will go ahead and um, let some of these maybe be a little oranger and that's because that'll let me highlight with some underlighting, some yellow. And that can be very powerful. Gonna do some little wispy up bits. Can't uh, underestimate the wispy up bits. Not at all. Not at all. They're very powerful. Wispy up bits are wonderful. I enjoy them very, very much. See, I added some more yellow and took it to a little more of an orange as I'm coming down here into this space where. We kind of had started to talk about a cloud bank on this side of the sun. Skies are a wonderful, amazing, and fun uh, thing to practice. So this is my cad red and my quinacridone magenta, you know, coming back.
come into this purple and red a little more and kind of make a bank between these two. little purple over the quinacridone. I'm still just, you know, loving this brush. Well, this guy just gets to be more and more and more and more. It really does. And then back over into this purple and the white that I had. Again, purple. So you just get a little more purple into that. Blending these little edges here. So that's building up some really interesting and surprising cloud expression, isn't it? Surprising cloud expressions. That's what we got here. Now I know I want this to be sort of more full with that purple. So I've got to think about that now. I've got banks coming up in front. This was a lot to build up, so let's call this a step. Let's rinse out our brush. We don't need to dry yet because we have a whole area in the top we can build in. And again, this is just the beginning layer of these clouds. We have to really dimensionalize them out. So, you know, it's just wonderful to know that we can do that. I'm gonna take a lot of my Quinacridone, a little of my cad red, some of my doxazine purple. Think about this space here. Maybe a little white in the back here. And we're going to bring a little bit here. This is just the start.
little wiggle wiggle. more magenta but I put some wine into it just gives us a unexpected direction put the unexpected direction a couple places you can't put enough unexpected direction in. <laughs> never let that never expect to be unexpected <laughs> <laughs> well I mean the, the kind of end point to that is, is that at the point that you're creating, uh, like what I, what you know, a um, uh, supernatural sky almost, you can't go too far, right? More is more. In every way, the more is more. Now, something for you guys to know and not panic on in your canvas is that when you're up close on it, you'll see layers from underneath. You'll see brush marks. You'll see stuff. It's when you get a little bit back that you really start to understand what you've even made. I'm going to come back into my red and yellow. See how we're doing there? We're being wild. Are you wild? So wild. Like wild crats? How wild are you today? I'm being pretty wild. I hope you're being pretty wild with your clouds. Being a little, little bit. What? What, what? We're going to be a little bit like Roy Kent over here. We're here. We're there. We're every blank and where. Roy Kent. <laughs> all right so we're just kind of adding a little bit of that there we're just warming it up right look at this warm it up and it just it goes on fire it's on fire my yeah. friend that's what you want. You want a little bit of fire. Where's your fire? Don't ever let them take your fire. A little bit of pop of color. Because you know we can. I mean, it's not bad already. <laughs> it's not a bummer already. I'm just going to take my cad red over to my, there's maybe, it's almost even an orange over to my Quinn and white. Just being playful. So if you're wondering, where do I put these warmer colors? On the bottom side of the cloud that's facing the sun. That's how you find it. You're trying to find the bottom side of the cloud. A little bit of my cad over to my Quinn and White. Just warming it up. Maybe even a little yellow. Just getting it real warm. Warming the undersides of these, right? That's what we're doing. Okay. Let's rinse out. I want to um, kind of dry everything. And when we come back, I'm going to show you what's next.
So I'm going to come through here and I'm going to take my dot ox purple and I'm still on that same brush and a little of my ultramarine blue together and I'm going to get some good white into there so it's quite light. And I'm going to just, just for a second, get this whole lower area done. Doesn't have to be perfect because there's going to be a lot of layers here. But I do want to start getting that tone of purple in, right? Now I'm going to get a little of my white and purple and blue. have a very light kind of uneven line. It's going to imply kind of a mountain line. Just a little uneven line. And what's nice is that the clouds and this distant scape are kind of in the same hue, the purple clouds, so it does some cool effects here, I feel. Kind of pull that forward a bit, perhaps. Now it's looking pretty good. So we have that nice little line. It's okay that it's streaky down low. It's really about creating these layers. And this is my first one. I'm going to come back and hit another edge so I don't really have to be too stressed about it. So I'll let my quinacridone and all that previous mix into my ultramarine blue. Get some titanium white in that. And we're going to come here and... I'm going to kind of just wiggle a line so you can see where I'm going to go. I'm going to grab a little of uh, my white and I'm going to brush up underneath here, kind of in a curve. Can you see that? I'm brushing totally, upward. Totally, yeah. Maybe push another little purple line here. Kind of breaking those open. I can always go into my quinacridone and kind of blend between these two banks. You see how we're doing that? Yeah. Doing some yeah, negative totally. space painting and blending between the two banks. So that just creates the two different little spaces of a cloud bank. Maybe a little lighter here. I'm going to come over here and have some similar stuff going on. So that was like my um, ultramarine blue and my
quinacridone, magenta, dox, purple, and titanium white. A little more quinacridone and a little more ultramarine blue. And you can see I'm just kind of filling in, painting some of the negative space, some of the positive space of the cloud bank now. I don't really see too much each of it until I come in and add um, the highlights from the sunset. So that's sometimes the important part that we are waiting on, which helps us break those two banks apart. You know, it really helps us make the difference just overall. Coming forward, I can take my uh, purple into this sort of orange and white. gets lighter and warmer through here. And that's an important thing to recognize is that as you get into those spaces, you know, those kinds of things have started to happen. Now I am going to switch brushes and we're gonna do a new step. And I think I'm gonna get into a smaller round. Okay, so I've got a small number six round and I'm going to come in and start adding some, I don't know, some highlights and some detailing and everything to the clouds and break up the banks and do some of that. So I'm going to take my CAD uh, yellow and CAD red together. I'm making small little marks. I'm going to come in and Add some heat to just some of that up there. Maybe more red, but as we get further away. But now we're just, we're painting those undersides. Can you see those undersides start to... Totally. Get their, get their, get their groove on, get their awesomeness in. You know, as I'm down here, it might be more into the yellow. And then as I come forward, it'll be interesting. I'll be going yellow and white. So they'll start to pull apart from each other. Maybe a little more peach. So I've added some white to it. That's sort of always interesting to, to pull that into. So similar motions, similar effects. We're just, we're just highlighting different parts. You know, back here, it might be more into the quinacridone and uh, 
tad red. Get a little bit of uh, my white over here. I haven't rinsed out my brush. Capturing some highlights there. So I'm kind of creating a more peachy orange over here because I'm getting it back over into my Quinn and my white, but then I'll come and get a little cad yellow and it does pick up a little cad red. So that's how we're getting to that color. And I'm kind of saying that the front of this has a bit of that going on. You know, then I might come back with a little more white and yellow and pick up some of that cloud bank there. I can always go into my purple. And you can see kind of create that transitional space. If I have to get a little bit wet, I get a little bit wet. A lot of white kind of coming from underneath here. Kind of talking about that underside there. Back into that peach. Get a little bit wet if I need to. And back into my kind of little red. And we can even start to sort of talk about like there's this cloud line perhaps here. See how I'm kind of lining it out? And I just create that little, that little drama. Talking about the fronts of those clouds. And then I just get right back up into that orange. And you can see right away that it's talking about the fronts. And then if I go right into my yellow and come along here and warm up even some of those oranges.
Oh, he's he startled me there. <laughs> it's a jumping brush. That didn't happen. Yes. It's the jumping brush. And you can see it's just starting to be on fire. And that's what you want is you want it to start being on fire. That's the that's the good spot right there. You're setting your sky ablaze. I think you've heard that saying before, probably like the sky was a blaze. This is this is a blaze. I was looking at the other screen there for a second. Oh, that's OK. You can see I just keep adding highlights and highlights and highlights. It's so amazing. And then I can always come over here into my purple, a little Quinn, you know, and some white. And give the purple part of the cloud just a little bit of definition, can't I? So it has some, it has some interest. I gotta get a little more water on my brush. That'll happen every once in a while. I'll be working so long that I've got to re-wet the brush. Now I think I'm going to, you know, really, really come along this. Kind of see that, those highlights happening, can't you? So a lot of times people paint with these colors and they get muddy and hopefully you're kind of seeing how the way that we're using them to keep them from that. Maybe a little bit brighter in value than I might want. So just pigment that back down, right? That's what we just keep doing. We keep pigmenting it back down. All right, rinsey, 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 rinse. We're doing very, very, very good. I'm going to come in and get a little yellow now and some white. And highlight some of those. Oh yeah. We can do that there too. Everybody can have a highlight. And 
Maybe a little more yellow than that, but you know. Just finding it. There we go. Yeah, just pure yellow. Just painting a little bit of that just so that everything sort of catches that kind of maybe extreme sunlight, right? Just where the sun might be, you know, really, really hitting it. Just adding a little white down here, kind of tucking that in. Sourdough. That's looking pretty okay. Now we're going to call that a step and I'm going to put out something called a uh, fluid white acrylic and I'm going to get a liner brush and take a little bit of my fluid white acrylic and my liner brush and touch it maybe with just a, a smidge of a, the um, yellow. and white line, not all, but some of these clouds. So this is a, a nice uh, number one liner. I like this part of the clouds. I know you do. So I like to put a silver lining on my clouds. <laughs> um, the reason being is that um, I think it evokes that feeling of uh, hope and miraculousness. So it's just a part that I really like to indulge in. And yeah, it is a bit of indulging, but. Sometimes we should be able to indulge a little bit. come along these little edges. Then I'll take a little of this into my yellow. I'll just line some of these little interesting ones here.
Now, you've changed color there a little bit. Yeah, I've added some yellow. That's why I said to yeah, yeah. take some white into that yellow because, like, um, you know, these aren't as close to the sunlight, so they, their lining won't be quite as bright, perhaps. Also, my line will get finer as they come out. Again, as I get closer to that sunlight, I can add some more white to it. See, so just little dramatic moments. I can find other little bits in the clouds that I really like to sort of piece How out. How do you know so where, where, you're, where to put them? I think I look at these edges and I think I ask myself, uh, is this facing the cloud? Is this a part of one cloud? Is it a back cloud? And then would there be enough light coming through to kind of edge it? Now, it's a little fantasy for sure. So you're just this is a little bit just about how you feel about it. It's a little bit about how you feel about it because we don't really have a reference like this, do we? We have references we can look at of light on clouds, but we don't have this as a reference. You don't get this as a photograph. I can come here and you can see I just highlight maybe some of the little bottoms. More yellow as I'm going. Isn't that wild? Yeah. yeah, it really is. Just pulling those different little moments. Now I'm going to switch to the other side of the canvas. Just a little bit. You've got a little more yellow on here than white. I may have to move a little more white into it just to get it to show. Come in and make some little small details down there. See, those are like little wispy clouds that could be down here. You know, the light catches just the tops of that. And that's okay. Maybe a little more yellow. Light some undersides. Great skies can be just a lot of fun to make. Like I'm wiggling the brush there to capture some highlights. Yeah, they really are. So there's just a lot, you know, that we can do. I might exaggerate the white right here where I'm kind of saying the sun is mostly focused. 
Yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. All right, let's dry everything. I'll tell you what we're going to do next when we come back. Well, now that we have this big, beautiful sky done, we get to put in our fun landscape. Now I'm going to come and take a angle brush. This is the Catalyst uh, quarter, uh, I think that's a half inch angle brush. And I'm going to take a little bit of my purple and blue again, kind of make that distant landscape color. And I'll come along here and, you know, just kind of make sure that this is got a nice crispy edge. See how we're able to do that now? Maybe here it's a little bit lighter than it is on those outer edges and that's okay. Don't worry about too much here because we've got the trees and that one landscape. So it's not, it, it's not going to ask too much of us. That's too, that's too dark. We need that line in. Okay, then as we come forward, we can get a little darker into the purple and blue, right? And that can be maybe a little more interesting. See how we did? A slightly darker layer. Yeah. Just going to paint that crisp in. I want it to be fairly covered in paint. I know I'm going to lose a lot of this to the focal, uh, bit of land mass coming up there are focal trees. Yep. So I don't want to be too stressed about that. And then I'm going to get a lot more blue. Uh, if I need to get, you know, just, just much, much more blue, it's got to be a little bit darker than the one that's behind it. Again, I don't worry about it too much there because dark, dark, dark landmass. Now I am going to just enjoy and paint this blue here just so that we have good coverage before I have to um, get into the black and I'm going to need to dry it before I can uh, do the work to get into my black. So once I have kind of a distant, oh that's sort of nice, I can, you know, I might need to come in with maybe some purple here. I just want to make sure it's darker. It has to be ever darkening shades coming up. So like when I'm looking up the monitor, it doesn't look as dark as it needs to be. So I might come in and darken that a little bit. Now again, I know I have a lot of black up here, so it's just, I don't have to be too about it. Let's dry everything. And then we're going to put in that foreground. So I'm going to load up my black on my same brush and I'm going to start here and I'm going to just, actually it can even come down here. It's 
So this is the basic land mass, right? And I'm just gonna paint it solid black to start. Now, if you don't have a good black, this can be frustrating and you might have to do a couple of coats. If you have a good black, you should be able to do it in one coat. It's really about the, the black you have in your paint bucket. I'm going to also come here and I'm going to do an interesting thing. I'm going to just come along this edge, making up and down marks. This. See, because you don't necessarily have to have the, the black up front isn't necessarily the same uh, field very, of landscape. It's very black, black. It's a very black black, but it's important to know it's not necessarily the same field of landscape, right? And we'll do a little, we'll do some stuff to just kind of make it feel like less than it is. Like we can take a little bit of our, our red here. And we can make it a little bit of a highlight. It's still pretty dark, but it does give us the beginnings of like, oh, like maybe this is really close and that's a little bit further back and this is what we've got going on. Now I'm going to rinse this out and I'm going to grab this brush again and I've got it lo edge loaded and I'm going to make, I'm going to come here and I'm going to just upward up a little kind of deciduous tree here. Maybe uh, make a little, it's perhaps a little brush that is not as, not as resilient. Uh, if I need more water, I can get that on there. Okay, so when we have those in, I'm going to then, I'm going to go ahead, you might think I'd use a fan brush, but I actually think I'm going to use my uh, D brush, my number four D brush. If that doesn't work, I'll go down into my round and I'll go ahead and put on some glasses so I can really see because I will want to see some of the trunk. Let's get this wet. Oh yeah, that's exactly what I was hoping to get. So it's not as, say, big as like a fan brush might be on this. And then I can make it very scruffly. coming along that little land mass, scruffling it up. Got to scruffle it up, my friends. Scruffling it up.
And then you can kind of see, like I start on this little edge and I tap up top, but then as I want to come down into the wideness of the tree, I bring that brush onto its little edge here and allow it to go out. This would be the same technique with a fan brush if you wanted to use a fan brush. If you don't know how to use a fan brush, I have a bunch of five minute videos on how to use a fan brush. Because I'm awesome like that. All right, I'll rinse that out back into my um, little round brush here, my number one round. Load up with a little thin bead of paint. Make sure I've got a nice little trunk going down. And I'm going to add little sad pine branches. And that may seem a little weird, but it's going to, when I get the highlights on there, make these trees look so much more interesting. Oh, it really does. Kind of like a broken down little fall. All right, we're gonna dry it, dry it, and we're gonna call that a step. I'm gonna take my round brush, the Raphael number six. I'm gonna make uh, a nice kind of bright red orange, and I'm gonna mix it into my black like a little bit. And I'm gonna come here and maybe even a little more cad red than that. I'm going to tap some highlights on some of these fabulous uh, and interesting little leaves. Maybe even more cad red. I like it. Not everything. And the black is to give us, you know, some contrast and stuff. So we're just saying that there's some sunlight on that. a little bit on our trees just a smidge it's okay it's just a little now what's also really wonderful is I'm going to come here and you know really give us some highlights on this And we're just getting some landscape there, right? Some little landscape, bushy, shrubby things. So it's not just a silhouette, right? It's a silhouette that has picked up and is in some light. I think I might get back into my D brush because I think it makes a better bush bush. If 
but I can always go back into my black to kind of blend this into the hill. Can you see what I'm saying? So there's lots of contrast. I like that contrast. Really lights up that hill. And that's what we're really trying to do is we're trying to say, okay, this hill has some lighting on it. Just tap a little of this out. I'm just going to let the roughness of the brush create the effect. kind of show the fire of the landscape. And you can just put pure black back or if you need more contrast. I like that contrast. So play with it, you know, think about it, play with it. back any black, you can easily do that. So don't feel like you can't. Not that you did. This one has a little less red on it. It's more in the silhouette feel. Maybe some just pure CAD res sort of tap there. So I'm saying like just in the pure CAD, just use the power of CAD. But the power of the CAD red. You are pulled forward in the canvas. Maybe just a little, you know, kind of orange there to just sort of do it. And I think this is just our fun little sunset painting, guys. Let's put a signature on it. And, you know. That was really nice. It's a really nice little painting. It's just a nice little painting that you can do on a nice little day just to relax. Give it a little signature and when we come back, I'm going to tell you what you're going to do next. So guys, that was a lot of fun. I'm really glad we got to do kind of this fantasy sunset. Sometimes these supernatural sunsets are a lot of fun to paint. They're kind of like landscape plus. It allows you to play with color and light and really allow your imagination to, you know, play and have a journey and it makes the, the sky kind of the subject of the painting, which is always, I think, a lot of fun. Now remember, in the description below is a link to the website. On the website, you can find my art store. In my art store are the materials I demonstrate on the show. Um, if we're ever out of anything, you just write us at support at theartshipper.com and we'll make sure it gets restocked like really quickly. Um, I really think you guys will like it, but you know, again, shop anywhere you want. Uh, also, if you are a patron, you will have a uh, patron video from this that uh, you will probably see before this video comes out. But if you like getting one-on-one -on -one studio messages and things like that, 
maybe you want to be a patron and uh, patrons at the 25 and 35 dollar level they get a discount in store so those are good reasons to be a patron <laughs> if you love, if you want to but you don't have to you never have to just a thumbs up and a comment really goes a long way that subscribe does a lot for us so it's just wherever you're at in your journey john and i are good with everything aren't we babe yeah yeah so we're good with everything um remember if i if you didn't make the premiere and you had a question and you're watching this i don't care if it's five years later or ten years later go ahead and put that question in the comments i check my youtube channel every day and i do actually sometimes see questions from older videos because i do check every day and the way youtube uh, surfaces them. I don't see everything, but I see more than you would expect. If you like paintings like this, you definitely should subscribe. Now, I really hope that the art is with you on this painting. I can't wait to see yours. Share it in group. And other than that, there's nothing for you to do but be good to yourself and be good to each other. And I do want to see you at an easel really soon. Bye-bye.